Welcome everyone to episode number 40 of the Fitlandia podcast. Today we welcome back doctors Mark and Michelle Sherwood talking about nutrigenetics and the future of healthcare. Before we jump in, I'm excited to announce that we have a sponsor for today's episode from Portland Community College Functional Nutrition Program. Are you interested in starting a career in nutrition or do you want to add nutrition into your existing coaching or health profession? Learn science-backed nutrition principles and traditional wisdom with Portland Community College's 100% online functional nutrition program. It's also where I got my credentialing. I'll talk more about it in a minute, but for now you can learn more at climb.pcc edu forward slash nutrition. Okay, let's jump into today's show. You're listening to the Fitlandia podcast with your host and performed dieter, Krista King. Engage the power of your mind to kick dieting to the curb today. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Fitlandia podcast. Oh my gosh, it seems like forever since I've recorded one, but it's only been a couple of weeks and I am pleased to welcome back some guests that we've had on before, Doctors Sherwood. Yeah. Yes. It's so <laughs> I, I'm always like, is it doctors? Is it Doctor and Mrs. Doctor? You know, those titles just get me every time. But anyhow, welcome back to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. You can call us Doctors M M&M and M without, without the, the sugar. sugar. How about oh, that? Oh, I love it. Okay, that's what we're calling you from now on. Doctors M and M without the sugar. Um, Because I'm sure we're going to have you on in a future podcast because I love what you guys are doing. So before we jump into today's topic, which I'm super excited about and I'm thrilled to um, have connected with you guys to have someone to talk about it. But before we do that, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourselves for those who haven't tuned in before. Well, Dr. Mark and I, we run a wellness-based practice in Tulsa, Oklahoma called the Functional Medical Institute. And myself, I'm just a board certified internal medicine, sports medicine doctor that has a passion for uh, wellness. And together, he and I bridge the medical uh, model with the uh, alternative or functional model, if you will, and teach people how to be completely and totally well. You know, and in our, our practice, we just use all kinds of unique and interesting tools to accomplish that mission. I, I love that. How to be completely and totally well. Like, mm-hmm. it's not outside of our realm that we could actually be completely and totally well. I love that. It's not. And we have, you know, routinely people come in on a stack full of medications and conditions and we see those things get reversed and or go away. So it's it's pretty yeah. cool to watch it happen. And that's what I love about functional medicine. And, you know, here in Portland, I work closely with Dr. Jerome Craig, not only on the Fitlandia podcast and our webinars, but also personally as a patient. And just the different approach of like really getting to the root cause and focusing on hormones and neurotransmitters and, you know, coming from a nutrition uh from from a nutritional approach, I just think is so important. And so that's what yeah. gets me really excited about today's topic. So why don't you go ahead? We're, I know we're going to talk about nutrigenetics, but also right. nutrigenomics. That's right. They're two different things. <laughs> you are. All right. Well, just bring us down to like layman's terms and get us grounded with the basics of nutrigenetics. Um, Okay, first of all, we have to understand that genetically, we all have our unique makeup. Uh, However, we are all 99.9% identical, which is quite (laughs) fascinating. But in that 1%, I know my wife and I, she's got the more beautiful (laughs) 0.1%. But the point being, we are different. And it should be noted that we all know we're different because when you take a traditional diet, it doesn't work the same for everybody. Yes. Nor does a particular workout program it doesn't work the same for everybody. So that 0.1% makes um, all the difference in the world. Now, our genes, uh, we are born with. But the experiential knowledge those genes have with the interaction of the environment um, creates this idea of what's called epigenetics, or the environment's effect on the genes. So we know two twins can grow up that are identical, 
in uh, completely identical in genes, and they can turn out a little bit different because of the environment's effect. Okay, okay. does that make sense? Yep. Um, and then we have this what we're trained in epigenetics and or I'm sorry nutrigenomics and nutrigenetics. Now, nutrigenetics is the the genes that 0.1 percent difference affect on the environment. In other words, um, how does our genes affect what we need to be taking, what we need to be using? Um, how does it affect the way we detoxify things, or what, the way we handle lipid metabolism, the fats we take in, okay. or handle workouts that we have? How does it handle inflammation? It's the genetic effect upon the environment. Nutrigenomics is the other way. It's the environment's effect on the genes. So we can manipulate the genetic expression by changing the nutrigenomic interaction between the two. Okay, so we're not destined to only nutrigenetic uh, destinies of our genes. We're able to affect the expression of those by reversing it back the other way. Great. So if we were to like boil this down really succinctly, so then what we eat could actually influence our DNA and our expression of our DNA. Bingo. Uh, absolutely. And, and you know this just from being uh, nutritionally sound is that what we eat, nutrition is 85% of your long-term outcome. So if you're going to put bad gasoline into your system, you're going to have a not so good outcome. Yeah. But if you put good gasoline into that system, you can have a really shiny, vital outcome. Okay. Now, what if we put sugar in the gas tank of a car? If you put sugar in the gas tank <laughs> of your car, you're not going to get down the block. You know, <laughs> very fast. You know, so why do we put that stuff in our system every day and right. expect it to give us the performance that we really want? Yeah. But we would increase the exercise potential environment by putting sugar in the gas tank because everybody would be walking. Right. Just a thought. <laughs> Just food for thought. Well, let's all do that. Let's all throw sugar in the gas tank tomorrow and see what happens to our cardiovascular health. Yep, absolutely. So let's talk about, you know, you mentioned not one dietary plan works for everyone, and I love talking about that. But how would someone know if one dietary plan is actually, you know, suppressing the bad gene and another one is actually enhancing all the good genes does that make sense my question yeah because uh, let's face it the goal of dietary or nutritional plans is to optimize body composition we want less fat more muscle we don't yeah. want to have excess fat and we don't want to have muscle loss uh, we typically measure that through uh, bioimpedance technology or calipers or um, water immersion, whatever the case may be. Uh, but that's how we typically measure it, and that's how we typically find out. You know, two people are side by side, they try a nutritional plan, and one doesn't work the same as it works for the other one. And so it traditionally found just trial and error, and we never yeah. really nail it down too much. And so when we can uh, uncover the genes, um, Crystal, we're able to get that uh, ideal ratio of macronutrient breakdown for everybody, therefore, the result is going to be optimization of body composition. Okay, great. So it sounds like you're talking about doing you do some testing with your patients yeah, that gives you a general guideline of what direction you might steer them in. Yeah. Um, go ahead, sweetheart. Well, we use a, a very special test. It's a buckle swab. You know, you just take the inside uh, buckle cheek cells and you send it off to the lab and we get about 80 different genes that are specific for health, you know, macronutrient breakdown, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. We get that metabolic piece, which tells us, you know, how do you metabolize lipids? Uh, what about methylation? What about detoxification? It even gets into, you know, specific um, metabolisms like lactose sensitivity, salt sensitivity, caffeine sensitivity, you know, what's going alcohol. on in that liver with alcohol and the conjugation phases of detoxification, phase one and phase two, talks about bone density and the BDR receptor. Oh my and goodness. Yeah, so it's health, it's metabolic, and then the last component of it is exercise. You know, most people think that hmm. if you exercise more, you're gonna lose weight. Well, um, yeah, bad thing is, is, you know, exercise can be inflammatory. Yeah. Right, right. The wrong and the wrong kind of fuel that goes with the exercise and yep. it's yes. all connected. 
Can I give you an example that uh, we see practically that everybody, all the listeners will get? How many people do we know that can have a, a cup of coffee or caffeine late at night and still have the ability to go to sleep? Yeah. Versus people that take in coffee, like say at two o'clock in the afternoon, and have trouble sleeping. Well, um, coffee or caffeine is a toxin, so the body's uh, metabolism of that caffeine can be either fast or slow. And that's a difference that we have uniquely in all of us. And when you start looking at that through the macronutrients of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates and how we handle all those things, we're able to really mm-hmm. narrow down what we need and we see the differences in each. The example I gave you about caffeine, obviously, that tells you that a person's detoxification system, if they don't metabolize it quickly, is a little bit impaired. Okay. In other words, something's yep. amiss somewhere. So we need to do something on the back end to improve detoxification as well as reduce the toxins on the front end. So therefore you see the nutrigenetic effect and the nutrigenomic effect. Okay. So let's say you swab someone's cheek, you get the test results back. Are you then analyzing it and saying, okay, here's our starting place now and here's a, a good dietary plan to follow as well as exercise? Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. We uh, we try to get as much information as we can historically from the patient. Like, number one, what they like to do, what their lifestyle is like, what their current nutritional guidelines are at the moment, um, what their home situation is like, kid situation, job situation, because all yeah. these things matter. And then once we get that and we get that nutri- or that genetic information, we're able to kind of put the two together to come up with a plan that works. And it's going to be uh, – Sometimes with people, it can't be like this drastic switch. Right. Sometimes you got to baby step it and deal with systems at a, one at a time. But sometimes the people that get it, a lot of people that come to us already kind of get it. So then you can kind of go right in and fix all these things at the same time, and they get rapid results. I mean, we see body composition alignment change, muscle tissue growth, and, and they get on their feet. And this represents a, a more or less a sustainable life plan for the in the duration of their life right right which is i i think that's great that you're doing that because that's really the challenge in the diet and fitness industry is we Mm -hmm. want to throw everyone on these plans um and i love that you're addressing their lifestyle too because that's a big challenge for a lot of people like a single full-time working mother has a different opportunity to fit in you know, certain lifestyle changes and it's how do you like tweak that to maximize it. I love that, uh, you know, I'm, and I'm sure you talk about an exercise plan with them too and all the benefits you can even get from a seven minute HIIT workout versus needing to go to the gym for an hour, hour and a half. Give you a good example. (laughs) Get this. We had a person recently that came in uh, and this is going to be, I wouldn't say typical, but it is a person that all of us know. A female comes in, she's in her forties, a uh, chronic boot camp person yeah. all the time, 10, 15, 20 pounds overweight and excess fat and can't get it off. Stressed to the max, thinking she's not working hard enough, frustrated, not sleeping well. She's doing two boot camps a day, sometimes now, two or three it's days awesome. a week. Yeah. yeah, tired out of her mind. You, know, <laughs> you just described me <laughs> yeah, before. It's, it's, before. So genetics, we did yeah. the genetics on this person, and it, we've seen it much. And it turns out that they are more the endurance base uh, genetic structure. So instead of taking away boot camps, what they love to do, that's an adrenaline rush, we would yeah. say tone it down to two or three times a week. And the rest of the times, just walk, go for a walk, yeah. listen to some music, you know, just chill the heck out. <laughs> and when they do that, we all of a sudden see the weight start coming off. But in their mind, they're still tripped out because they are quote unquote burning less calories according to my fitness pal. <laughs> yeah. But the the body genetically is adapting the way it's supposed to be. And then sometimes you can take people on the flip side and get them in a two or three minute or a seven or eight minute hit workout three to four times a week, maybe five, and they don't need to do so much of the long endurance walking and they get great results too. Yes. So it's nice to be able to unravel that mystery with every person so that we can give them specific individual and unique plans that they're going to get optimization of their health yeah and they can get to those answers faster i that i always tell my story how i came to fitlandia and i've been an athlete my entire life but i was still 50 pounds overweight working out six hours a week 
How, how is that possible? Well, I was eating and drinking trash, right? Yeah. Because I was in survival mode with no coping mechanisms to handle my stress. I had no um, really good boundaries to, you know, shut down work. Sorry, got to go. Even to, to take a walk. And man, how things have changed yeah, since right. then. And then it becomes much easier. And now I'm more aware of my addictive tendencies toward donuts and <laughs> and wine uh I, i'm always honest about that so yeah but it would have been great to have some testing back then to say hey here's a little bit more information about your body to take a faster route there because that was a pretty long journey for me to figure that out now this is a fascinating one too that i just thought of when you said that the tasting thing and you'll know where i'm going with this dr michelle the, the um there's two genes that we test in there one's called a taser and one's called a drd and the taser is like the um the spectrum of taste buds. In other words, we some of us have a wider spectrum of taste and some of us have a more narrow. The more narrow people can eat bland food, et cetera, et cetera. The ones that have the broader taste, they, they appreciate the bitter all the way to the sweet. Yeah. But you have that bitter, that wideness or spectrum there and you have the dopamine receptor that is dysfunctional too, a person susceptible for that sweet that makes them happy. And happy is sweet. Therefore, food becomes happiness. So when we know that, we're able to say, you know, you can't open the door with uh, even taking a bite for those people because it would cause the door to come flying open and it would open this whole addictive personality thing again towards towards this binge eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think this is what's fascinating, right? And we're, and we're all somewhere in that spectrum of... That's right. And I, and I think, you know, that's kind of a point I want to make to everyone listening. This opportunity to be really gentle with ourselves as we're learning how far open can we open that door? And then when we do, how far open does it swing? Mm-hmm. And how do we bring it back quickly, right? Because what happens with a lot of people on this yo-yo dieting cycle is that door swings open and it swings back open for years. Um, And that's really what I do with a lot of work with the mind zoning is to create a thought pattern in the brain that says, wait a minute, wait, let me go back to what I know. Let me take my education. Let me take all these amazing things that I'm learning. Let me create a neural pathway that says, no, wait, go manage your stress with a good brisk walk or a jog, you know, whatever those things are so that we can start to rely on more those more and become aware of them but also not to go back into this like shaming cycle because that shaming cycle takes you back into it too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What you said too, you know, I think that's information is powerful. You mentioned not going to the shaming cycle, cycle, Krista, but we, we find that when people have the information, like this and we think that everybody should have it you know everybody should do this i wish little kids would do it because it's nice to be known for the parents sake what's a kid supposed to do you know yes, how do you raise that answer. but once you know this information it empowers people it gives them this knowledge base that they can always go back to and say yeah. well this is me and they don't <laughs> they don't have to ask for permission or forgiveness it's them right you have all the tools necessary to be successful in the area of all all areas of the wellness journey. Yeah, well, I'm so on board with that. We we couldn't be more aligned in that philosophy, and that's really what changed for me, and that's one of the core values of Fitlandia is to bring high-quality education to people because when they can start to understand how their body functions, then that shame goes away. Now it's, oh, okay, yeah, my boundaries haven't been so good this month, and my stress level is through the roof, and I haven't been focused on my self-care. Of course, my cravings for sugar are going to go up because my brain's just like, please, can I just feel safe for a minute? Right? Yeah. Go get wanna that sugar. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be happy. I want to feel safe. Yeah. So I love that. Hey, we're going to take a little break from today's podcast and give a shout out to our sponsor. I'm excited to announce that the school that I received my nutrition education from is today's sponsor, and that is the Portland Community College Institute for Health Professionals. I studied with them in 2015, and it really set the foundation for Fitlandia's stance on nutrition. The Functional Nutrition Program is a one-year-long program, 100% online, taught by experienced 
experienced nutritionists. You'll learn science-based nutrition principles, as well as perspectives of Chinese medicine and Ayurveda for a well-rounded understanding. The Functional Nutrition Program at PCC is a college-level program for people who want to take Holistic Nutrition Credentialing Board Certification Exam. They've partnered with the National Association of Nutritional Professionals, so all students receive a complimentary student membership, exam resource guide, and the Holistic Nutrition Credentialing Board Exam fee included in their tuition. This program is incredibly forward thinking as it looks at nutrition from an integrative healthcare and functional medicine perspective. The next class starts September 25th, and you can learn more at climb.pcc.edu forward slash nutrition. Okay, back to the show. So when you talk about testing with your patients, you know, I think there's a lot of areas in the country that, um, Functional medicine is still kind of new, and it's not widely adopted. And I don't know if you guys do testing remotely with patients. I don't know if your laws require you to work one-on-one with them in, in your local area, but talk a little bit about that and how people listening that might not have direct, direct access to it could start to open their mind to a more functional medicine approach. Well, I think uh, it's important to know that because of the beauty of technology such as Skype that we're on right now, um, we have patients currently in 14 states. So the ability of people to obtain this type of information is super easy. Um, We have people all the time that that hear about this. We're very unique in the panel we run. It's, It's kind of a customized panel that we have here in our part of the world, really, in the U.S. It's unique. So um, it, it's one of these things that people, when they say the word, we can mail them a kit with a sample instruction, how to get the buckle swab. We mail them a bio bag. They just put the sample back in there, mail it back to us, and we handle it from there. Uh, it's about a, once we receive the sample back in our office, it's probably a 21 to 25 day turnaround. So it's not much. And then we will email the patient wherever they are. Uh, report and it's about a 48 page report so it's a massive oh, wow <laughs> and we give them a couple weeks that. to get uh, some good bites of that thing okay and then we schedule a skype call and we have them break it out and we break it out and we go over it with them piece by piece discussing all the areas of vulnerability then we give them an action plan to fix it nutrigenomically and then they're able to take that action plan and employ that and implement that to their success. And we also create what we call a synopsis report from our end for them. So they'll have their 48 page book, the uh, explanatory implementation consultation, and then our implementation uh, synopsis. So they have this thing for the rest of their life. So it's about, they end up with about 50 pages of, of data. <laughs> about that them. Can, plane that they can they can just fly on for the rest of their life for their success that's great um now do do as we talk about the rest of the life well bookmark that don't let me come back to that but before i forget i know that there's people listening that are going to say how much does it cost and we'll certainly put a, a link um in the show notes to your website on how they can contact you but how much does the testing and those consultations like putting all that together cost someone well, it's not as much as you think. Um, and I can tell you uh, the genetic information that they're going to get from this is going to cost you probably between $3,000 and $5,000 here in the U.S. But we do it here as $349, uh, $349. We do it because we believe in, in not to you know, not to play on a store, but we believe in kind of the Walmart model in a sense. We want people to have it. Yeah. We don't want it to be so up there that people can't afford it. So it's 349 to get all this information, and uh, obviously we charge a little bit for shipping. It's usually six to seven dollars to ship the kit to them. So they're okay. going to be 356, 357 range, depending on where they are in the U.S. or the country. Now we do have a couple people out of the country that get it as well. So uh, that a little bit more shipping with that. But once they get it, then we get them on a on a Skype call like this, and we spend about 45 minutes. And we charge them 100 dollars for that. Okay. So they're out less than $500, 
and they're going to get all this information that's going to be life-changing. So we don't back away from that at all. We think that's a small investment for an incredible return on investment that they're going to get for the next 50 or 60 years, and we want them to get this. And uh, it, it's one of those things we're excited about. It. We're good at it. Now, we studied our tail off to get this. <laughs> right. The bottom line is we want people to have this so they can unlock the keys and the mysteries to these um, kind of problems that they've had. How do I lose weight and keep it off? How do I optimize my body composition? How do I build, build and maintain muscle tissue? Yep. How do I uh, prevent myself or protect myself best from potential carcinogenic activity, um, heart disease, uh, diabetes, you know, things of this nature that really need, don't need to be there. So we give people that the, the tools necessary for uh, answering their own health care problems and then they can begin to manage their own health care. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's a great kind of talking point, too, is... Whenever somebody's looking at investing in their health when insurance doesn't cover it, because I, I would imagine um, you're not working with insurance on that piece, or do well, you? Some people use like their FSA or HSA, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. which is perfectly fine. And that's if that's applicable to a person, we highly recommend they use that. Yeah, absolutely. But but one th- one thing that I'm really passionate about, especially with the potential changes coming in our healthcare system in general is like we have to get away from the band-aid approach of taking the pills and really take charge of our health with positive thoughts, moving every day and eating the right foods. Like it's oh, it, and connecting with community, right? It always comes back to those four things. And if and I've done a lot of research on the statistics too of when you invest this much money in yourself, you're actually preventing this much in your own healthcare costs, whether it's through uh, premiums that are through the roof or um, co-pays, all of it, you know, medications and, and then all of the side effects that come with medications. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a place for medications. I wanna make that really clear about my own personal position on that. But I'm, I'm always of the, um, the philosophy that we should try to do everything we can with really good food, moving every day, positive thoughts and community. Um, what can we accomplish with our health with those four things before we have to go outside of that? So you talked a, a little bit about some of the different um, conditions that might show up in the the swab test, right? So um, does it bring to light diabetes or um risk of heart disease or risk for like any kind of cancer markers. I don't know how any of that works. So, I mean, in this specific test, it's looking at health, metabolism, and exercise. So the genes that are involved there, they may tell you if you have a propensity to have insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes or the inability to manage sugar. And with that kind of knowingness, even with lipid metabolism, how you metabolize lipids and cholesterol, you know, those those particular genes, are you going to be one that is more likely to develop diabetes or heart disease? Okay. You know, the effect of nutrition on those genes. So if nutrition is driving those genes that are already kind of uh, susceptible anyway, the likelihood that you develop it is going to be, you know, tenfold yeah. or be right in your face. And that's how it's so powerful to know if you've got those genes, you got to stay away from the poison. Yes. Right. Because some people are going to be more susceptible to those things than others. That's so right. he- and These markers are actually, um, you know, the data we've read on there, it, it seems to be they're, they're more predictive of uh, long-term disease conditions than just looking at one gene. So you're looking at a pattern of stuff. Right. You know, many times we try to nail things down to one gene, but we're looking at patterns of multiple genes. So we're able to address it from um, multiple positions to correct the downstream output. Right. Yep. And so 
yeah, if you carry those genes, you know, the genes that you can't detoxify estrogen or, you know, different marker gene markers that increase the propensity to carry or to develop certain types of cancer. If you stimulate those genes in a negative way, you're going to upregulate them and get to that endpoint sooner. Got you know, it. Just because the gene is there does not necessarily mean that you have to turn the gene on right. and reap this negative reward. You know, if you say, well, my grandparents had type 2 diabetes, you should already be on that issue because that is a man-made affluent disease. And if we know we're susceptible to having that, shouldn't we get on board with nutrition and lifestyle? Right. In our Before. infancy and growing up and you know through our college years when usually we just derail and go the other direction. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. And then the, the other question that I have is, so you'll be able to see if, oh my gosh, yeah, alcohol, sugar, refined carbs is especially dangerous for this person. But are you also able to look at things and say, Yes, they should um, stay away from gluten, or they should stay away from dairy, or they should stay away from all grains and legumes. Do, do you get into that level of detail with folks? Yes, yes. absolutely. Wow. That's a, it's it, that's one of the things that people want to know. You know, they want to know what I need to stay away from. They want to know what I need to stay to gravitate to. And um, we're kind of a big proponent, uh, Chris, in regard to taking away the ignorance button, you know, in people's lives, you know, they can say, I didn't know. Yeah. We want to tell them so they'll have at least the opportunity to to make that decision, even if they make a wrong one. I'd rather have them have the chance. And so, you know, uh, for, for less than a premium payment per month that people are paying for insurance, you're going to get all this opportunity. And uh, and yeah. that's kind of the way we've, we've talked to our patients about this. And they walk out of, you know, our offices, um, fully equipped to make an educated adult decision. They're empowered. It, it, yeah, it gives them the, this, yep. this great ability to say, you know what, now I know. Yep. And I can own my health care. Exactly. Or you can choose to stay on the path that you're on. I, That's right. I, I, always, I always say that to people. As soon as you have the knowledge, you're empowered, right? Don't judge, right. don't judge your decision, just know the consequences. And and Dr. Craig says that, that a lot too. He, yeah. There's no con, there's no guilt, only consequences. <laughs> if people choose wrong, I, we still love them, right? We just <laughs> be able to, to, to wash our hands uh, every day yeah, yeah. from the, the failure to um, not tell someone the full truth. Yeah, absolutely. That's, where, that's a short circuit right there. We haven't done that. You know, what's medicine's philosophy? First do no harm. Right. Right. Hippocrates, first do no harm. Yeah. But if we don't tell them the truth, did we do harm? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, right? It's it's uh, guilt by omission or, or whatever that's right. it is. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I'm totally on board with all of this. Is there, do you have any um, resources that you like? Like, is there a go-to place on the internet where people could learn more that we could include those in the show notes too? You know, I think finding reliable sources is really difficult. So mm -hmm. are there any that you're, that you're that it's your go-to place too? Um, for the g genetics or what are we yeah, talking yeah. about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for the for this very topic, the nutrigenetics. Uh, but a cool video that we put out on our own website. We just tried to explain it to people, and of course, I know you'll have our website listed. But there's a video there under what we do, and there's one little section on genetics, and we just encourage people to go there. Oh, great. That's great. what we do with patient-based people. Call in, and they'll say, "Tell me about this," and we'll say, "We'll go to the website and just listen." And, and you get awesome. to see my wife talking about genetics, and I get to be her uh, her companion on that. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, I'll make sure I have that direct link, too, so yeah. that people know it's easy for them to find that video, and they can check it out. Super. Any other last-minute thoughts, tips, um, any insights on the research that's coming out about this? Anything at all that you can... Uh, pearls of wisdom think, to share. You know, uh, the, the cutting edge future of healthcare is going to be right. tied to um, the omics. You know, the nutrigenomics, metabolomics, proteomics, all those things. It's coming. 
um, this is like leading edge stuff that people need to know right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that kind of sparks something else. You know, when we think about how our food has changed over the centuries and how disease has changed right along with it. And, you know, you, you guys hear this all the time in our in our industry. We hear all the time. Oh, the 80s, the low fat um fad that brought in all of the sugar and then led to the obesity epidemic and you know so it's interesting now that the pendulum is swinging yeah completely the other way to say hey how do we now use food to pre- prevent disease cuz that's really what we're talking about sure let, right yeah, exactly let, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food Right, yeah. and wasn't that like Aristotle or something? Yep. Yep. Which yep. is crazy that, like... Yeah, it's nothing's new, right? You know? Exactly. <laughs> gotta keep discovering it. But yeah. with our industrial, you know, the industrial revolution and the, the growth of agriculture, we just blew that up. We got so far well, away from it. If our genes have changed just 2% in 10,000 years, if we yep. believe that to be the truth then we, we know that all these sickness conditions have got to be caused by something. Yep. And if the genes haven't changed, now we can see our own ancestors' genes really reflected in our lives, and we give it back to more of a primal or a primitive type of nutritional program with the knowledge we have now. Yep. We make these disease processes go away. It's just a matter of people really want to. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot. And when you, like, think about... <laughs> Your patients collectively, and I don't want to lead the question, so I'll just ask it this way. Is there one dietary plan that keeps coming up more regularly for for most than not? Do you, does my question make sense? Like, is there, like, yeah. oh, yeah, let's put them on this dietary plan. So, I mean, you know, the most important thing we do is really an elimination protocol. Yep. And it's eliminating all of the standard American diet, you know, go-tos. The sugars, the grains, the breads, you know, the artificial sweeteners, the corn, the high fructose corn syrups, soys, GMOs, MSG. So we just really clean it up and bring it back to really what we were designed and intended to eat. And that's fresh and raw fruits and vegetables with an emphasis on vegetables, the alkalizers, yep. the mineralizers, the deep nutrients, nutrient dense foods that have very low sugars and don't stimulate that insulin to create this whole spin out. Mm-hmm. And then add good protein on top of it, nuts and seeds. And, and there you have it. And we just eliminate all of the metabolic waste products that cause all this in disease and get us back to really the root of nutrition that we were designed and intended to, to eat in the first place. We just kind of call it the anti-inflammatory food protocol, and we mm-hmm. don't put people on limits. We just give them kind of guardrails, yeah. you know. <laughs> you know Absolutely, you, yeah. You know, taste buds, they never get out of control. We never overstimulate those dopamine receptors. We stay kind of down the middle path, and we people don't overeat when, you know, That's right. just the, the nuts and bolts is for no intensive purposes is set in front of them. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Thank- the, uh, stuff. the the, the gen, uh, genetics has done for us it's it's um, obviously it's confirmed that what Dr. Michelle said is true that does generally work the best for everyone we get a great return on the investment and then secondarily we're able to streamline and identify targeted supplementation mm. that are the cofactors to these genetic um, enzyme functions that work and so we, we were able to save people a ton of money by not having to buy all kinds of things. And we kind of have a rule of five around here that works pretty well. If you're taking over five supplements, you better have a good reason. And the good reason can be backed up with your own genes. And so yes. you're not, you can actually overstimulate the system from an antioxidant uh, standpoint by taking too much, thereby shutting or weakening your own body's defense system down so it's not simply as much as putting too much on and trying to outnumber it it's letting the body build and work its own uh, processes yeah an antioxidant can be oxidative if it's in excess and the system can't handle it even vitamin c you bet we don't ever think 
what does over pollution of just good nutrition mean if a system cannot Can enzymatic not. get it to the next step yep. or yeah. you know seeing the vitamins or the cofactors that get it from one step to the next it can be a problem see this is why i do the podcast because i learned yeah. so much too <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love it i love it well and i'm also going to make sure that in the show notes for those that are just tuning in there'll be a link to the previous podcast that i did with doctors m&m without the sugar there you um, go yes which was all about the anti-inflammatory diet and really just focusing on reducing inflammation so any last words before we wrap up this awesome show today yeah. we're grateful <laughs> I mean, this is we always appreciate you krista thanks for having us on and uh, we're grateful and hope everybody gets uh, inspired and has a good time and gets educated and gets motivated to do better. Yeah, I love that. Great last words. And I am grateful as well that I've connected with you both and that we got to do another show. And I'm sure we're going to do more shows in the future. Sure. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. If this is your first time with us, there's loads of ways to get more out of Fitlandia to help you on your fitness journey. First, subscribe to our podcast where we bring you interviews with experts, inspirational stories of transformation, and techniques to help you strengthen your mind to make fitness fun and easy. Be sure to download each episode so you can access them anytime, anywhere. And don't be shy about sharing them with your friends and family to help them too. Also, head over to the Fitlandia website where we're offering up our free recipe ebook called The Type A Fitness Fix. You'll get healthy and easy to make recipes loaded with Fitlandia approved ingredients to support your goals. Sign up today at fitlandiafitness.com.